Hi, I'm Brian Iverson. I'm the T-Stud guy. This video is for carpenters, architects, designers, probably everybody fit into that uh, mix. I made a separate video for electricians and I made a separate one for plumbers. Okay, so I'm going to try to run you through everything that I can possibly think of here in a few minutes on how to, how to build with the T-Stud. So simply, two by six, two by four, take those, throw them to the side, put your, put your T-Stud in. These are certified to hold roughly 2,200 pounds if it's a number two, not a stud grade. I don't know what they are. A two by four, uh, number two is certified to hold about 900 pounds. We're certified to hold 8,600. So when you're out there framing and you need to calculate your loads coming all the way down, just remember that if you're gonna try to use as much of this design value, you have to make sure that we don't crush this plate. This plate, a number two plate, SPF, will crush at 3,600 pounds. So you can get by with a whole lot less studs in your in your house or in your building structure, whatever it is that you're your um, whatever it is that you're going to build, if you use the T stud. Every structure we've done so far is at 24 inches on center, except for one shear wall in Colorado, 12 feet tall. We ended up being 12 inches on center. Okay, so we've done pretty good. Value added is going 24 inches on center. Okay, so these crush at 3,600 pounds. When you start framing your wall, what I want you to do is start out every wall with a 2x6 and end every wall with a 2x6. These are significantly cheaper than an engineered stud. So if you start out your wall and you have an uplift connector, that uplift connector is, is big, right? It sits like a palm. You nail the living daylights out of it or screw it on and it stops the wall from being able to lift up. Obviously, we don't have those designed finalized yet for a T-stud, and frankly, these are cheaper anyway. It doesn't make any difference on the energy efficiency of it if you start out with a 2x6, so just use them. Framing. There's two different ways to do this, okay? 2x6, top plate, bottom plate, standard, that's easily, easily done, or you can use a T-stud for the top and bottom plate. Just kind of depends upon what your client wants. Um, money is a factor. Return on investment is a factor. And uh, so if you're lead certified, you're trying to go for a score, or if you are a passive house or a net zero uh, kind of person, yep, the T-stud finishes out the entire story and you get a complete thermal break through that whole entire assembly, obviously, except for where the dowels come across. Okay, we're gonna talk about the standard two by six top and bottom plate first. You still have to have two nails on one side and one on the other because it's five and a half inches deep. Your king stud and jack stud, screw them together because a three and a half inch nail doesn't work, right? You have to have one inch of embedment, not including the point of the nail. So screw these together off to the side and off you go. When you're putting your header into place, what you gotta make sure is if you, if you use a T-stud for header or if you, if you do a built up header, where you have foam in the middle. This is a two by 10 LSL header with foam in the middle. This will sit on top of the T-stud and it'll be uh, bearing with your jack stud on the front and the back. But some of you nail your headers together, two two by 10s or LSL, nail them together, and then they insulate from the front side or the back side. So one of those headers is gonna sit on top of the foam. So if that's the case, or if you have a triple header, one of those headers will sit on top of the foam and the foam obviously can't carry a load. So then what you end up doing is, is you cut your jack stud short and build a squash block that sits all the way across the top. And I would build that out of LSL or LVL so that when you nail it on top, it doesn't split on you. Two by sixes, they're gonna split half the time. You're gonna get frustrated with it. So just use a piece of LSL or LVL for all your squash blocks and off you go. Okay. Otherwise, frame like you normally do. Um, okay, so that's that. Start out every corner. Put a nailer in. This wall actually goes the other direction. So here's your nailer for your drywall. And when you build your other wall, starting in front of it and coming out, you end up with a complete thermal break all the way behind. So makes, uh, makes for energy efficient structures. Okay, so that's that wall assembly. The T-stud wall assembly that I have here is the T-stud for the top and bottom plate. You end up having to, um, you're gonna have to 
cut your studs half inch shorter because a T stud for the top plate and a T stud for the bottom plate were a half inch taller. And for as we start out here, we're not going to send out and ship out a whole nother set of skews for our stud lengths that are a half inch shorter. So I'm going to apologize in advance. Okay. Uh, cut them off a half inch shorter or your wall assembly is going to end up being an inch taller because your stud studs are coming out at 92 and 5 eighths or 104 and 5 eighths, 116 and 5 eighths, plus the T stud top and bottom plate is an extra half inch taller. So your whole wall assembly actually is going to be a half inch taller. Okay. Um, otherwise, there's no difference. Okay. In the, for the plumber. The plumber is the tough one. Okay, so in this in this case, I have a kitchen window, uh, is what I'm trying to replicate right here, and that plumber needs to run a vent horizontal through the studs. When you're framing, one one stud you're not going to see the t the dowels at all, and the other side you're going to see them. What I would tell you to do is the whole entire house. We don't care which way they go in, left or right. Doesn't make any difference. Turn them however you want. But if you got the, if you know that there's a vent going in for, by the kitchen window or hot tub or in the laundry room, you want to make sure that you line up all your dowels going across so that that plumber goes all the way across and doesn't have to drill through one of our dowels. You only get one broken dowel uh, per stud in an entire structure, so don't do that. We've no, everybody's missed them because they listened to the video, right? Everybody, everybody, everybody missed them. Except for one. The, we had one plumber hit seven of these in the same structure. He had to have aimed. That's all I got. That's it. He had to have aimed. Okay, if you're using the T-stud for the top plate, there's a couple of fasteners that you have to be aware of. This one right here is a RTA2Z. RTA2Z. This is a Simpson product. This is an inside. So, fastens onto the inside and off you go. Okay, but the outside one is where the strength comes in. Standard strap. Nine fasteners one way, nine fasteners the other. Put it onto the outside to hold your whole entire wall assembly together. And that's how you hold your top plate together because you only, you only get one top plate. If you're doing advanced framing with a two by six, only just a single two by six, you have to line up all your studs all the way across. When you're using a T-stud, you don't have to line them up. Uh, you can go as much as five inches one way or the other from the stud in case you screw up with your truss layout. Okay, so, but this is the connector that you have to use to hold your top plate and bottom plate together. And obviously a standard uplift connector to hold down your trusses. So that's that. The electricians like us, they run around with a half inch bolt, uh, carriage bolt in order to pound through all their wires. That works pretty nice. If somebody does cut a dowel, one uplift connector on below it, one above it, and you, you've replaced the one. So that's how fast that goes. Okay, that's all I got for you.